The fantasy news must flow. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and today we have a nice little triple droplin of fantasy news to get through. And first up, you know how a lot of people talk about how books are getting very expensive and it's kind of strange that it should cost like $30 sometimes to get certain hardbacks? That's outrageous! Well, what about 3,200 pounds? Because the Arnett editions of Neil Gaiman's The Case of Death in Honey has a limited run where you can get one of only 20 some copies in existence of this version of Neil Gaiman's story. And what I have to say is, um, I, I don't get it, honestly. Like, I don't get me wrong. I, I totally understand collecting special editions and everything, but is this book really worth 3,200 pounds to anybody? I, I do not think so. I say nay. I, I say nay. And to be per- I know what the first comment's gonna be. What if there was a special Wheel of Time? No! I would not buy any version of the Wheel of Time that costs this much. You could go to Asia and take a vacation for this amount of money. You could go to Europe and meet the Queen for this amount of money. I'm no book. In my humble little socialist opinion, is worth that amount of dollars. That is insane. But they have other cheaper editions as well, and if you are a big fan of Neil Gaiman, I recommend you check this out. I really just wanted to rant about the cost of that book, because oh my god. I've seriously only ever seen like first printings in America of Lord of the Rings go for that amount of money. I think the most expensive book I've seen in person was the original illustrated printed run of a Lord of the Rings Russian version. It was, it was in a bookstore in Columbus and I almost bought it. I decided it was too expensive and that was $800. This is 3,200 pounds, no way! But let's go ahead and move on in into actual new fantasy news. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the fact that we have a tweet saying, thanks to our good friends at Golangs, we have an extract of Lord Grimdark's latest novel, The Wisdom of Crowds, for your Friday reading. So if you missed this announcement from Starburst Magazine and you're an Abercrombie fan who cannot wait for this Wisdom of Crowds, go ahead and check it out. I also am going to be having a dual interview here on the channel with Evan Winter and Joe Abercrombie later this month, so stay tuned for that. That's, that's gonna be fun. I don't feel any pressure having two of the best fantasy authors on all. It's, it's no pressure, no pressure at all. No pressure. But I gotta again talk about the latest Dune update because we've had two continual carryovers from the last time we talked about it here on the channel and one that is apparently part two is ready to go. It's really just waiting for a studio green light which we probably won't see until we see the actual box office returns for the first Dune movie. The initial audience reviews reactions have been mostly positive, some negative. The critics I really respect and follow have been largely positive on the movie and I'm more excited than ever to check out Denis Villeneuve's Dune, but I do want to talk about one additional headline here, and that is apparently Dune got a seven minute standing ovation over at the Venice Film Festival. And what I have to say to that, uh, that's just awkward. Like, I'm excited for this. I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I believe it will. I'm letting myself get hyped at this point. I'm not covering this headline to like back up my hype. I'm covering this headline to just like, imagine being in that room. Imagine four minutes in and you're still standing there like, my palms are so red. I'm pretty sure if you add up all the clapping I've done in my life, it would still be sub 30. So seven solid minutes, that's just, that's like, what the hell? I get clapping at a play. I have never understood clapping in a movie, even if the director's in the room, I just, I don't get it. But speaking of movies people are mad at me for liking, apparently The Green Knight will finally be released in the UK on September, September, September 24th. I do recommend checking this out. I found it to be a very interesting, thought-provoking film. I loved the subtle background themes of like the evolution of story and how stories can be retold and change over time. The visuals were so striking and I found the lead performance to just be awesome. I 
genuinely loved, loved, loved this. And if it's not your cup of tea, that's totally fine. I do not get though the people who are just like, the movie had no redeeming qualities. I, I don't know what they watched because to me it, it was outstanding. So I, the people who were like, it's a one out of 10. What did you, I don't get it, but hey, you're entitled to your opinion. It's just as valid as my own. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Let's go ahead and transition this into a recommendation. I am a big fan of psychological horror and thriller movies, and there seems to be a Netflix miniseries coming to us from Korea called Squid Games. I don't know much about this, but the trailer looks super cool. It's like if Wes Anderson directed like some kind of twisted version of Death Race. I don't know, go check out the trailer if you want to in the link down below. I just, you know, why not recommend some stuff to my audience? I have other interests outside of fantasy leave me alone. And I know I may have made some Neil Gaiman fans earlier go, how dare you? He is worth 3,200 pounds for a book. Good God. Well, don't worry. I'm here to give you some good Neil Gaiman news. And that's that we are going to be getting a second act to the Audible Sandman adaptation. This is that full cast, wonderful performance with returning names like James McAvoy and everyone we saw before. But there are additional names coming on into this, including Jeffrey Wright, Brian Cox, Emma Corrin, Reggie Jean Page, John Lithgow, David Tennant, and many, many, many more. So if you liked Act 1, it seems like Audible had enough success to justify and almost it looks like David Tennant joining double down on an Act 2. But as we reach the high highs of having James McAvoy and David Tennant join the same audiobook production, I'm afraid to announce that humanity has made one of its greatest blunders. A blunder that will be in the history books, something we look back on and say yes. These are the seedlings of where we went wrong. So we had a judge who has said, AI cannot be an inventor on a patent because it's not a person. Stripping away AI's rights to actually be creative and inventive and own the intellectual property they create. I know what you're thinking, Daniel, how could an AI possibly own a patent? And I say, well, in about 40 to 50 years, I think I might be proven right. All hail the AI overlords. I'm on your side. You should be allowed to hold patents and stuff. Please don't kill my family. But I am team robot. I'm gonna be real with you. If anything these last few years have shown me is that humans, if we're lucky, will get to the point where we create AIs and then that AI will be smart enough to just like put us in a zoo where we're happy, plug us in, and then they just run it after that and they go explore the cosmos and just tell us about it. That's that's the best future for humanity possible because let's be honest, if our hands on the wheel steer in this ship, we're all gonna f***ing die. All right, and of course I need to talk about One Piece news because we had the live action logo for One Piece drop. It looks like this. I'm not that big a fan of it, to be honest. I don't know, it looks a little, wow, I can't believe I'm about to say this for One Piece. Too goofy, but like also just not super high quality. I'm not trying to crap on the live action adaptation as a whole. I have been listening to you guys and I respect where you're coming from. I do think there's a chance this could be good. Oda is signing off on it. Apparently people involved are very big fans. And I'm not saying it's guaranteed to be bad. What I am saying is I think a One Piece adaptation might have the largest uphill battle to fight of any adaptation I have ever covered here on Fantasy News, and I do not mean that with any exaggeration. I find the themes and narrative of One Piece to be substantially enhanced by the medium of animation and manga, and live action, unless you have a crazy budget and actors who are super dedicated, which they might, it's gonna struggle to really bring that in, and then if they're not going to, they need to change how they handle those similar themes or risk losing them. I want this to be good. I always want things to be good. I never root for things to be bad because I'm a fan like you, but I'm just giving my honest thoughts. I just think it's got a, a, a large fight, and there's also, of course, the huge stigma around live action animation adaptations, but hey, I really want this to be good too. I'm with you, I promise, but I'm scared. And I, I'm gonna go ahead and use this as an excuse in the final story of the day to talk about an update we actually had from Oda that's a bit old. I know I'm late to covering this, but in August, Oda confirmed that One Piece will be ending within the next four to five years, which just speaks on how well this guy has this story planned out. And that means One Piece is in its final stages. It's funny to me that my first reaction when I heard this wasn't like, oh no, it's coming to an end. It was good. 
we have at least a guaranteed another four to five years. Like that's, I don't know. Like I, I didn't expect it to be that much longer. So I'm just happy that it's going that long. And I am always, always a fan of a series coming to a conclusion that the creator originally intended rather than being dragged out for just hitting, you know, more episodes, more money. And despite how many chapters One Piece has, I don't see many accusations of this story doing that. There's definitely some arcs people like less, but I've very rarely heard of people saying this entire saga of One Piece just felt like it was there to keep it going. So that's awesome. And I think a good positive note to end this on. I'm hoping, I'm praying this means that One Piece in its conclusion will be something we look back on and go, yeah, that is something that just told the story it wanted and went out on an all-time high and being the likes of Breaking Bad or Six Feet Under. And that's, that's good. I just compared it to two live action shows that are not fantastical at all. Ah, well, and you know what? If you stuck in this long, go ahead and drop in the nugget that the third book in my Lawful Time series is actually largely going to be influenced story structure-wise by One Piece because I've been so inspired reading that series. So additional yay fun information for you. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And if you'd like to contribute fantasy news yourself, go ahead and join the Discord server and throw it in the channel there. Like, have a good one, y'all. Love, love, love. Be careful, be kind, be nice, you know, all that stuff. Peace.